So thanks for the invite to this exciting event, and I'll talk about two tales of retrieval. So uh, the field of natural language processing uh, has undergone a revolution in the last few years, mostly uh, through uh, the revolution of self-supervision. So I'm not the first speaker, so maybe you already know this, but if you join right now, uh, self-supervision is something along the lines of, you take naturally occurring texts from the web. There are many, many texts on the web. You take some text, uh, you apply some noise function to this text. You know, maybe you delete some words, so here the word first was deleted to some uh, kind of like special word and the word Aviv also was uh, removed. And from this, you generate data in the form of pairs X and Y, where X is the noisy text and Y is the original text. And you train a model to reconstruct the original text from the, the noisy text. And you do this a lot. You do this over the entire web for like billions or trillions of times and train your neural network, your sequence to sequence neural network to take the input, output the output. Uh, and after it does it for a very long time, it turns out that it's good in the sense that it knows a lot about language. It knows a lot uh, about the world and so on. And this has been taken to the extreme uh, in recent years. Uh, and one of like the uh, interesting manifestations of that is what's called GPT-3 style models, uh, where you see this phenomenon called in-context learning, where once you have trained your very, very large language model, you don't really need to train it anymore for any task. The only thing you need to do is just show it a few examples of desired behavior, and then it will behave accordingly. Here's an example for grammar correction from the original paper where uh, you use your huge language model to correct bad English sentences. You show it a few examples like eated is corrected to I ate, and then eventually you show it, I'd be more than happy to work with you in another project. And this language model, which knows to kind of like continue your uh, prefix, just outputs good English, I'd be more than happy to work with you on another project. So this is very promising, right? Now, now we can train this like very large language model just once, uh, and now we can perform any NLP task, and this is quite uh, exciting uh, uh, for us. But of course, things are not perfect, and there are a few areas where uh, there are complications, and I'd like to talk about two of them today. Uh, one is uh, for the case of what's called open domain question answering, where you're given some question that is a factual question you want to know the answer to, and some corpus, maybe it's the entire web, and you want to answer that question. Well, of course, you cannot give the entire web as inputs to the neural network. It has some uh, uh, bounded length that it can take as input. And also, like encoding all of the web in the neural network might not be the best idea because you need to update it, and it's huge and so on. So this doesn't work very well uh, in this setup. Another case this doesn't work very well is actually exactly the one that I talked about, where it turns out that these huge models are currently at least uh, pretty brittle. Um, they kind of like don't always work. You show them a few examples and sometimes they fail. So maybe you try to translate English to some API language and it doesn't work. Instead of giving you the directions to the Eagles game, it gives you the distance from where you are to the Eagles game. And this is kind of like a function of what examples you show it. But maybe if you showed it some other example, like uh, remind me how to get to the Kusama exhibition, well, then it would work just fine. So it's pretty brittle. It doesn't always work. And this is not like a very nice property. So today I will talk about two lines of work where we address both of these uh, problems with retrieval. Uh, for example, if we want to do open domain question answering, we're not going to go to the language model directly. We first will have a very kind of like thin, lean, hopefully retrieval model that will give us candidate paragraphs, places where we think there might be relevant text. And then this text with a question will be input to the large language model that will output the answer. So this is for the open domain question answering. And analogously, uh, if you want to uh, map from some uh, question to some meaning representation that will be executed on some device, then again, you need to choose examples to show the model. And there are many examples. So we will have a retriever that will retrieve relevant examples. And then these examples along with the input will be given to the large language model that will output the answer. So in both cases, the solution is very similar. So that's what I'm going to talk about today in the remaining uh, time. Uh, the first work is about open domain question answering led by Oli Ram and with uh, great collaborators here from Tel Aviv. Uh, so again, open domain question answering is quite an important NLP uh, application. You can imagine that people would like to have a thing where for any corpus of text, you can 
as quickly as possible, build a system that will answer any question where the answer is in that corpus of text, or at least simple questions that are kind of like answered very succinctly. And you can imagine this corpus of text might be scientific text like articles, might be news from the last three years, uh, might be Wikipedia, uh, or might be, I don't know if you're in a company, might be all of the documentation of anything that the company has ever done or anyone wrote in the company. So this is very useful as you can imagine. And it turns out that the main challenge nowadays is not to answer the question, it's just to find the paragraph where the, the answer is. Once you have that paragraph, we're in a pretty reasonable position to extract the answer from the paragraph given the, given the paragraph. But finding that needle in the haystack is still pretty hard. So how do people uh, do this finding process? How do they retrieve relevant paragraphs nowadays, typically with uh, neural networks? And this is the, uh, the high level approach. Uh, you take your question, you encode it as a vector with some neural network. You take all of the paragraphs in the corpus and encode each one of them as a vector, and you define their similarity to be the dot product. And you, at test time, you can do efficiently a dot product in sublinear time and very efficiently find the top K most similar paragraphs according to this dot product score. Uh, but of course, the issue is that you need to train these neural networks. And nowadays, for some reason, still the main way people do it is using annotated data, using tens of thousands of examples to train these uh, uh, question encoders and paragraphs encoders. And of course, a natural question to ask is whether this can be done with self-supervision without any annotated data. So in this work, uh, Oli and us uh, are proposing such a self-supervised method. Specifically, we're going to take naturally occurring texts and generate examples fully automatically that will be used to train the paragraph encoder and the question encoder. And the idea is to use what's called recurring spans. So what is a recurring span? I will show through an example. Imagine that you have some document of text. This is a document from Wikipedia about the biblical uh, character Aaron. Uh, and you choose some paragraph, we will call that the anchor paragraph, and then we will look for other paragraphs that share spans with this paragraph. So specifically, the positive paragraph will be another paragraph where both of these paragraphs have the span, the priesthood for himself and his male descendants. And then we will sample another paragraph and declare it as a negative paragraph because it does not share uh, to a span with the original text. So now we're going to imagine that the anchor paragraph is like a question, a query, and we would like to retrieve the positive paragraph, have a high score for that, and have a low score for the negative paragraph. And we think that the, 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 the two that should have high score are more semantically related, and this way automatically we will get a good neural network that knows to identify pieces of text that have a lot to do semantically with one another. That's the high level idea. So if you know about pre-training, you know that it doesn't really work uh, just like that. You need to do some processing to the input to make it look more like a question because we're interested in open domain question answering. So there is some process where we delete the recurring span, make it shorter so that it's more in the length of the question, and then either bring back the recurring span or not to kind of like teach it that sometimes there's overlap between questions and outputs and sometimes not. And then we use standard methods, the same method to train using what's called in-batch training to train a question encoder for the query side and a passage encoder for the uh, paragraph side. And all of this is done completely automatically without any annotated data. And the model that we get is called SPIDER, uh, uh, which is, stands for Span-Based Unsupervised Dense Passage Retriever. So here are the results. Without further ado, we test this on six common uh, open domain question answering data sets where we try to answer questions over Wikipedia. And the blue bar shows a model that was trains, trained on tens of thousands of examples. And the red bar is our approach that uses zero annotated examples. And yellow is a previously proposed method for self-supervision self for information retrieval. As you can see, the red bar rivals and even sometimes surpasses the blue bar. And it's much, much better than previously proposed approaches. Since then, there's been developments, but this is like uh, uh, the state of affairs. OK, so this is quite promising for uh, the perspective of building good open domain question answering methods over any corpus. You give us a corpus, 
We run this recurring span scheme and you get an information retrieval system for free and can answer your questions. The second work I'd like to talk to you is learning to retrieve prompts for in-context learning. And as I said, in-context learning is very inspiring, this idea that we will have to train once a huge model and then it will work for any language task. And the problem is that it doesn't work right now. It's just very, very brittle. Uh, for some examples, it works. For some examples, it doesn't work. It's sensitive to the in-context examples. So in a more high level, we can kind of like think of this as the question of, we're going to have these huge language models around us, these GPT-3s, and they know a lot about language. They know a lot about the world, but how can we effectively communicate with them? So we would like to build small, thin models that will allow us to communicate with these large models. So what's the idea? The idea is very simple, and this is not what we have done. This has been done before. Given some task like translating a question that you see here to a meaning representation that you see at the bottom, we're going to retrieve similar examples. And these similar examples will hopefully help us uh, decode the right output. Now, the question is, how do you define similarity? What are these similar examples? And what people have done in the last year, everything is moving pretty fast, uh, is just use examples that are similar in terms of the text. They just look for questions that have similar text. And what we're interested in is, is checking whether it's possible to do this um, automatically. Can we learn what are good examples? Not guess heuristically what are good examples, but learn what are good examples. So here's where we have one minute to talk about like, what is the idea? The idea is the following. Let's say that we have a, well, the idea at a high level is we're going to use language models to tell us which examples are good for language models. So it will be language models for language models. What do I mean? Let's say that we have some example that we would like to decode from the training data. We're going to go over a bunch of candidate examples, other examples, and use a small language model that will tell us which of these examples are good? What do I mean by good? I mean that if you show the language model, this example at the top, it will give high probability to the correct output. So this will be labeled as a positive example. And if you show this example at the bottom to the language model, it will give a low probability to the output. So we can label good examples that lead to high probability as positive examples and bad examples that lead to low probability for the output as negative examples. And once we have positive and negative examples, we can just train using the same method, contrastive learning, encoders for the examples and encoders for the inputs, and learn a retriever that learns to retrieve examples that are useful for in-context learning. So we do this uh, using GPTJ, which is a 6 billion uh, parameter model from a Luther AI. And we compare our approach, which is green, both to random sampling, which you see works very badly, and to previously proposed approaches that use surface text. So using surface text works pretty well, but actually learning what are the examples that will lead to good performance for in-context learning leads to substantial gain over three different data sets where we translate from questions to mini representations. So to summarize this talk, uh, large language models have changed the landscape of NLP. The entire ecosystem has changed, but there's still some major challenges around us. And I talked about two of them, not all of them. Uh, first, how do you work with large corpora where you don't want to encode them in the model and you cannot feed them as input to your uh, language model? And also, how do you talk to these la language models that are effective, but you need to extract information from them. And retrieval is a relevant approach for both problems, both for open domain question answering, as well as for learning how to interact and retrieve relevant examples for in-context learning. Uh, yeah, so that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, fascinating. Uh, I have a few questions from the audience. Uh, the first uh, are about uh, the spider. Uh, so did you try to consider recurring spans in different documents as well? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, uh, yeah, we wanted to do this, but uh, did not. I guess the issue is, of course, there is this uh, tension, right? Like on the one hand, the fact that the two documents are in the same, the, that the two passages are in the same document really gives you a strong hint that they are semantically related. So if you move to a different document, you might get like bad positives because now you might get the same span, 
but it might be just spurious. For some reason, it, the same span occurs. Maybe it's a short span, maybe it's a frequent span, and your confidence that this is not noisy is lower. Uh, but this is, of course, a good thing to try. And I think that you can possibly imagine, you know, like using BM25 or something like that to get like candidates for what are potentially relevant paragraphs from other documents and then apply recurring spans. And maybe this will lead to uh, further gains. But that remains for a uh, few. Yeah, there, there are also other version of this question. Uh, some people uh, ask if you have manually engineered the uh, uh, similar uh, paragraph. So, so you say that currently you try to avoid this problem by focusing on a single document. Yeah, so you imagine that all of the paragraphs in the same document are semantically related. And the two that have a recurring span are more semantically related than the two that do not have uh, a recurring span. And you know, there's a lot of evidence that in retrievers, hard negatives are a good thing. Hard negatives in the sense that like it's not just like a random uh, bag of yeah. words, it's actually things related, but not as related. But there's still and more room for exploration, of course. And that leads me to, to my question about contradiction. Whenever uh, you have this uh, uh, question answering, you may get contradiction result, contradicted results. So uh, yeah, I don't know, like if, if you get a contradiction, I don't know, maybe it's relevant. I'm, I'm not sure like what's the right thing, how to label it, uh, if a positive or negative. Uh, I don't know if someone asks, you know, like there's what's called like precipitous, like when did uh, Barack Obama land on the moon? Uh, if you have <laughs> ever landed on the moon, that might be like relevant as well. Yeah. So, so in contradiction, let's not switch to politics because there we always have contradictions and let's try to stick to science. Okay, another question. Uh, did you try to consider about the, the second uh, paper? Did you try to consider uh, the dependence between the different examples? Yeah, so again, we did not, and this is like a, a good idea uh, for future work. So just to, just to make it explicit, we score it, the way we use the model at test time is we show it many examples. We show it the top K examples that we think will lead to the right answer. Um, but the way that we score it is every example is scored independently. So you might have this bad uh, thing where you give many examples that are very, very similar to one another. And it might be good to encourage diversity that you bring many, many examples as inputs to the language model, but they should be diverse. We did not do that. I think it's possible and interesting to also uh, add some diversity uh, measure to kind of like have the best set of examples that are both high quality in terms of what you decode from them and diverse in terms of their similarity. Uh, but this is something that we uh, did not do so far. So it's up for grabs if anyone's interested.